All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. And of course, we have a very fun, action-packed vlog for you. If anybody's coming, if anybody's returning from last week and you're still angry, yes, this week, of course, we're going to be talking about nickel. In fact, it so happens that I don't have a beer segment this week due to my travel schedule from Vape Mania. I didn't get to shoot any beer. Today is not cheat day so I don't get to drink any beer today but we're going to be talking about nickel we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff we're going to be talking about uh, vape mania 2015 I'm going to do a slight little wrap up I didn't really shoot any video there I've got uh, maybe one clip I think and that's and that's it but I do want to talk a little bit about vape mania 2015 how that show went uh, we do have right so we're going to talk about nickel there's a couple corrections from last week um yeah, there's a lot going on. We're going to have uh, shout outs, of course, first impressions, of course, and I do have a retro vaping segment prepared. So the rest of the blog remains intact. One quick correction from last week. Uh, the gentleman that sent me the dihydrogen monoxide pictures, his name was Chris, not Ryan. Chris. I don't know why I said Ryan. I don't know where that name came from. I don't know why I said Ryan, but yes, it was Chris. I want to give proper credit to Chris who put together those uh, dihydrogen monoxide uh, pictures that we used uh, that we used last week. And uh, yeah, so moving forward, I guess the first thing we're going to talk about, California. California's being super shady again. So uh, I was on Instagram a couple days ago, and Aaliyah posted something about uh, we have till September 11th to call all these people, to call all these assembly people and urge them to vote no on AB6 and AB8. And so I reposted that just to, you know, let's get awareness out there. We have to still September 11th. That's when they're voting on this. And very, very shortly after I reposted that, Ilya texts me and she said, they moved the special session from September 11th to this afternoon. So this is Tuesday. There's eight numbers to call. I called them all already. We have less than an hour before they vote on this. And so I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? So I reposted her new post with all the phone numbers, says, you know, vote no on SB8 and SB6. And then we got into a bit of a, you know, I said, I'm full of rage. And she said, she's gonna riot in the streets. She called local vape and got all their staff calling. And I said, I'll text and call everyone I know. I actually texted Omboy OC and he's like, holy shit. And he started texting people. And so we kind of got this huge uh, chain going uh, between uh, a bunch of people in SoCal and then a bunch of people, hopefully on Instagram were calling and people were calling these numbers and getting hung up on I called a number and got hung up on and I called back and I called back and I called back and I finally got through and I said you know this is how I feel about these certain bills I think it's super shady and I hate to be the tinfoil hat pessimist guy and I and there was one gentleman in my YouTube comments who was uh, was very pessimistic and I said you, you can't be that pessimistic but now I get it I understand why people get that angry and that pessimistic when they when we when we defeat this bill and then they revitalize it in a special session and then they say the special session is going to be on September 11th and then they move it a whole week ahead of time a whole week ahead of time maybe not a whole week a couple days ahead of time and not tell anybody luckily someone caught wind of this that they were voting on it Tuesday so I called we, we all called like crazy people and I still don't know the outcome uh, as it stands right now of what passed or what didn't pass if you know uh, please let me know in the description um, so I can uh, update uh, please let me know in the comments so I can update the description on on what passed or didn't pass and this isn't you know the final the final vote of any of these bills this is just one more step that they have to go through before they get signed into law and you know Ilya posted a great picture that I would love to repost but it, the information was great but it's uh, the picture is actually a, a picture of her and so I'm not gonna just randomly repost a picture of Ilya as much as we would all like to see that it says please take some time to read this uh, the good news is there's still time to call your representatives the bad news is 
Uh, there is no real way to be certain about when they will actually address the bills and give a decision on them. This is how they do it. They move dates around and make it super confusing for people to keep, so people can't keep up and give up on them. We can't give up. Everyone's efforts were so huge today. We need to keep that going in order to stop these ridiculous laws from being passed. Here's why you should care. There are a few bills yet to be decided on, but here's what they mean. No more vaping in vape shops, and this is all for California. And keep in mind, when things happen in California, they move to the rest of the United States. So if you're sitting over there in Tennessee going, oh, California's so far away from me, that'll never get to Tennessee. It will get to Tennessee. No more vaping in vape shops. No more free samples or vaping at conventions. No more free samples or vaping at conventions. Remember New Jersey, the New Jersey Vape Expo? Not allowed to vape inside? Yeah, that's what ECC would turn into. That's what the SoCal Vape Expo would turn into. That's what the OC Vapors Club meet would turn into. No more product throws. No more giving out free juice. No more vaping uh, at any conventions. Huge taxes on hardware and juice. No more online sales. The legal vaping age would be changed to 21, and vape companies would no longer be allowed to uh, operate social media. So no Instagram, no Facebook, none of that stuff. We want this. We want to keep this community uh, the way it is. We need to keep calling, keep fighting, be ready to do it all over again tomorrow, first thing in the morning. Please stay involved and be ready to keep calling. Coming together as a community is our only hope to beat this. Your voice is not too small. Every call counts. I will continue to post details and plans regarding action to this, so please stay tuned. Ilea, thank you. Uh, she was a huge help to me in, I mean, she straight up just texted me and said, dude, they're voting on this today. These fuckers are voting on this today. We need to, we need to call. We need to get our friends to call. We need to get everybody on Instagram to call. We need to get uh, a ton of people to call. So absolutely, uh, we need to keep it going. Um, I haven't made any phone calls yet today simply because I've only been awake for about an hour. Um, but I'm going to be keeping making phone calls. And if you come across my Instagram, I mean, everybody reposted this. I saw a local doing it, Omboyosi, Malicious Liquids. I did it. Ilea did it. Tons of California residents kept posting the same, same picture that says, urge a no vote on AB6 and AB8. And it has all the phone numbers that you need right here. Weber, 916-319-2079. Just call and say, I would like to express my opinion on a couple of bills. And they'll say, what bills are they? And you say, AB6 and AB8. And then they'll say, okay, what are your opinions on those bills? And say, I would urge a strong no vote on those bills. I'm a California resident, taxpayer, business owner. If you're a business owner, you say you're a business owner. Resident, taxpayer, business owner. I would urge you to say no on these bills. AB6 and AB8 in California. California's just being shady. And we know why California's being shady. And they're being even more shady than I thought they could get. That's what they do. Like Ilya said, they move the dates around so people get confused and give up and go, oh, I thought we were voting on that on 11th. Oh, it already passed. Oh, shit. That sucks. Sucks for us. But California's being shady. So stay on top of it. Follow Not Blowing Smoke on Instagram. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. You can follow Ilea on Instagram. You can follow basically any vape shop business owner, any vapor in California, and you will see these calls to actions. You will see, you will see these reposts. So yeah, it's crazy. It's a crazy world. It's a crazy world we live in. I actually need a vapor just real fast. Just real fast. Wonderful. Oh, that was just what I was looking for. So, moving forward, a lot of people uh, got upset, rightfully so. Last week, I skipped over talking about nickel, and I'm going to say now what I said to a lot of people in the comments of last week's vlog. The only reason that I didn't talk about nickel last week is I was unprepared. It wasn't a matter of beers far more important than nickel. The fact of the matter is I didn't have all the information and I still don't have the information, but we're gonna talk about it anyway. I didn't have all the information, I didn't have all my facts and I haven't really formulated an opinion yet and I didn't wanna put something out there half-assed. And that's why we went, you know what? I'm not even gonna touch this right now. I want to be honest and accurate, so we're just gonna move forward. But this week, we are going to talk about nickel. So nickel, Nickel wire 
has been known to be incredibly harmful to people. There's a reason why we don't use the metal nickel in our cookware. There was a study done a while ago, and I'm gonna link to it in the description. Let me try to find it right now. Yes, from pubmed.gov, stainless steel leaching nickel and chromium onto foods during cooking. This was done back in 2013, and they did an actual study of cookware and used different tomato sauces in different cookware, some containing nickel, some containing chromium, seeing how much of this of this harmful nickel is leaching into these tomato sauces. And yes, I understand that atomizers are not cookware and e-liquid is not tomato sauce. But this also gives us a pretty good idea of the possibilities of nickel leaching into juice, getting up to a high enough temperature to release chromium oxide, which is really, 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 really bad. Really, really bad. It's just bad. So they did this whole study about different durations and different temperatures, and basically the abstract of what they found is that, yeah, <laughs> there's a reason why we don't have nickel in our cookware, because it leaches harmful, harmful shit into these tomato sauces. And I'm gonna link in the description, and I'm not gonna read this this whole thing, but it's graphs, and they basically talk about uh, uh, chromium leached uh, 126 grams per serving of tomato sauce. Stainless steel cookware can be overlooked as a source of nickel or chromium when the contribution is dependent on the stainless steel grade, cooking time, and cookware usage. It's it's a lot. It's a lot to read, and I don't even completely understand 100% of what I'm reading. You're basically, the abstract of it was that, yeah, there's a reason why we don't have nickel in our cookware. It's because it leaches really nasty shit into this tomato sauce. That was the first thing that raised a flag in my head of nickel possibly leaching and this, that, and the other. In fact, I have a video that I'm contemplating taking down and I'm probably gonna take it down on the Mutation X version four and I do a twisted nickel coil build. And I was talking with someone on YouTube and they said, yes, what I do, what the easiest way to do it is to glow it red on a mech mod and then cool it back down so that you can get a, a resistance. Well, when you're glowing nickel red, that is getting to the to the point where it's possibly releasing this uh, chromium oxide from the wire, and that is not good. And so glowing nickel is not necessarily a good thing. The problem is you're glowing nickel and it could possibly be releasing some pretty harmful stuff. But you're not vaping it while it's glowing. You're vaping it when it's a very m much, 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 much lower temperature. So the conclusion that I've drawn is basically I'm not going to glow nickel anymore. I'm not going to I'm not going to build with nickel anymore. I don't like the idea of trying to build my own coils with nickel, putting them in a device and then having the possibility of there being a hot spot. So if you're if you're build if you're vaping your own coil that you've built, your own nickel coil and you're vaping it and you're vaping it and you get a hot spot, it's going to glow red and glowing red is really really bad in just vaping in general, but especially bad with nickel. So he, here's where I'm landing on the subject and let me read about one more thing right now. So uh in my findings or in my researching that I did, I ran across a quas. How old am I? I ran across a website called wakeandvape.com. Wakeandvape.com is apparently a box mod vendor, but they have a blog on attached to their website and it says regarding nickel concerns and vaping. And they cover nickel leaching, nickel melting, nickel is too new, people with nickel allergies, vaping and nickel causes carbon monoxide. What does this all mean? So their whole wrap up here is, vaping with nickel is safe for the way we use it. Vaping is safe for the nickel that, for the way that we use NI200 wire. Is it 100% safe? I would think not. Due to the very nature of vaping, it is safer than smoking, 
far safer, and it is safer than walking around a busy city street or sitting in traffic while breathing car exhaust for a few minutes. There are no clear and present dangers while using coils made from NI200, especially for use in temperature control. In short, if you are wanting to use temperature control devices, keep those NI200 coils and vape on. Their, their conclusion was that for the way that we use nickel, it's absolutely a safe thing to do, right? So there's we have these conflicting stories. Here's, here's my opinion on the subject. I simply don't know if nickel in, in NI200 form, in the wire form, is safe to vape. I know you shouldn't be glowing it, but I don't know if it's completely safe to be using. What I think happened is that we all started using nickel wire because Evolve released the DNA 40 with temperature control and said you have to use nickel wire if you want to get temperature control. So we went, well, I want to try temperature control, so obviously I'm going to use nickel wire. I don't think that anybody prior to using nickel wire did any sort of research on whether or not it was safe. I especially don't think Evolve did any 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 research on whether or not it was safe to use nickel in their temperature control devices or temperature limiting devices. I hate the term temperature control because it's not controlling the temperature, it's just limiting the temperature, but that's a rant for another day. Here's my conclusion, here's where I stand on the subject. I don't wanna handle nickel and I don't wanna build my own nickel coils just because I'm scared of hot spots. Alternatively, I don't mind using pre-built nickel coil heads that were built by a machine that are going to be very, very precise and are generally guaranteed not to have any hot spots. And we're going to get into that into the first impressions, but I have two tanks. I like the Smoke Tech VCT tank with the nickel wire. It's a great vape. And I have a new tank that comes with nickel wire coil heads that is also just a fantastic, fantastic vape. Personally, I'm not going to be building any nickel RDAs, any nickel tanks. I'm not going to be building with nickel. And I'm going to try not to vape with any nickel. But what I am going to do is I'm going to use tanks like this. We're going to talk about this in the first impressions. This is the new Magnus NI coil head and it is a great vape. This is a 0.15 ohm coil. I have it at 520 degrees, 88 watts. Glorious. It's nice and warm, very full flavored. I don't get any nickel flavor. I don't have a nickel allergy. I'm just not comfortable building my own nickel wires. Let me know what you think uh, in the comments, what you think about nickel. And there was one, one last thing, one last thing on the subject of nickel. Since we're not doing beer, this can go just a little bit longer. There was one fella. There was one fella in the comments named, his name was Kevin. And I'm just going to read you his whole uh, comment uh, here. And I, 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 I replied to him and I said, I, do, I, I have spoken about temp control. I did a whole video on, uh, on temp control and it had the IPv4 and some other mods in it. And he says, I would really like you to talk about temp control soon. I've done it. Uh, people look up to you and they'll listen to you. I quit smoking three months ago and I started vaping and I knew that I never wanted another cigarette again. I spent weeks studying and learning everything I could before I tried it. Then I found out about temp control. My first thought as an engineer was, awesome, how does this work? So I continued to learn more about it. Oh, they use nickels resistance to determine the temperature of the coil. My next thought was, what kind of moron would willingly inhale hot nickel? This metal is extremely toxic when inhaled. Nickel carbonyl can kill you faster than a thousand analog cigarettes ever could. There's a reason why we don't use nickel or lead in making our cookware. They're toxic. It would appear that this new fad is catching on every person who is too lazy to Google nickel poisoning. Most of us quit smoking and turned to vaping to get away from the toxic chemicals that were killing us, so at least look it up before you suck something even worse than tobacco into your lungs. 
do the words liver failure or swelling brain mean anything to you? And of course, the vaping industry, like any other business, will respond to the demand of this new fad by selling you the latest versions of temp control technology that may inevitably kill you. Here's just a small excerpt from the Risk Assessment Information System Nickel Toxicology Profile. Inhalation exposure to nickel compounds will cause toxic effects in the respiratory tract and immune system. Acute inhalation exposure of humans to nickel may produce headache, nausea, respiratory disorders, and even death. Asthmatic conditions have also been documented for inhalation exposure to nickel. Soluble nickel compounds tend to be more toxic than insoluble compounds. In addition, nickel carbonyl, produced when nickel is heated, is known to be extremely toxic to humans upon acute inhalation exposure. And that was, a, that was published in 1991. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, nickel does not, if I was just uh, just passing through YouTube and I read this, I, I would be terrified. I would be terrified of nickel. As it stands, like I said, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, thank you, Kevin, for that information. And thank you to everybody that commented, whether you were nice or mean or courteous, I don't care. I appreciate the comments regardless. As it stands, like I said before, I'm not gonna be building with nickel. I am going to be using nickel coil heads, but I'm gonna be using them at a lower temperature. In fact, I think 520 degrees is too hot even though the vape is just so good. But it's not leaps and bounds better than anything I can get with uh, Canthal or anarchist wire or nichrome and i know i know that there is nickel in anarchist wire and i know there is nickel in nichrome but it's bonded it changes the composition of it and the only analogy i can think of was raw eggs yeah if you take a raw egg and you just eat it then that's going to be bad for you salmonella all this other stuff that could possibly happen from ingesting raw eggs but you take that raw egg you put it in a cookie batter and you bake it and suddenly that raw egg is is safe to eat because you've changed the makeup of it you've changed the composition of it and made it safe and i'm not saying that nickel is 100 percent safe in anarchist wire sure i would love to believe that but I still use Canthal, Anarchist Wire, uh, and Nichrome for my building, and I get just fine vape experiences with that. I, I'm not a fan of temperature control, and I've said this from the beginning. I'm just not a fan of temperature control, and it kind of freaks me out a little bit. The temperature control is getting so popular, and we're using a wire that we don't really know very much about. And there were people in the comments saying, well, I'm just going to use stainless steel wire. Apparently that could be uh, possibly pretty bad for you too. And I just learned this yesterday. Someone made a comment about, you know, stainless steel wire probably isn't super safe. So now I have something else to just spend my time attempting to research as well. As it stands, I'm only going to use nickel wire when it's in a pre-built coil head by a machine. And even then I'm going to use it very, very sparingly. In fact, looking around at all the setups I have right now, I have one two that's it i have two tanks with nickel coil heads canthal canthal anarchist wire anarchist wire canthal anarchist wire canthal anarchist 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 that's what i've been using i'm gonna try not to use nickel i don't i don't really want to use it i don't find some great benefit to this in temperature control i'm not even sure why temperature control uh, became a thing, I guess to eliminate dry hits, but I, I, I never had such a problem with dry hits that I went, God, I wish there was a wire we didn't know anything about and a mod that was invented so that we could use these two things together to hopefully eliminate dry hits. That's, that's, that's strange reasoning to me. But yeah, there you go, fucking A. We're over 25 minutes into this video now and we have officially, officially talked about Nickel. So there you go. Um, uh, I do want to talk about vape mania real fast. I want to talk about vape mania before we get to uh, any shout outs. And I have a feeling this is just going to be uh, this is just going to be a long vlog. But vape mania was great. Winston in Salem, North Carolina. It's put on by uh, the, the Freeze and Mooch who run the TVA show podcast. And it's always a really fun. Uh, it's a really fun show. It's not like a pro sauce sort of ECC type of trade show. It's really more of like a I don't know. It felt, in, in, I'm not saying anything bad about the event, felt a little flea markety. 
feels like a little bit like a free mar flea market. There's a lot of tables and a lot of vendors, and we had our table there, and there was vendors all around us, and it felt a little bit flea markety. But I got to meet some very, very, very cool people. I got to hang out with some very, very, very cool people. I, you know, and I always like hanging out with my friends, people like Mark from Labrat, Corey from the Cloud Corner, of course, Cheeksy Vapes, of course, Omboy OC, of course, Squid Dude, and his lovely lady friend Haley and of course uh, M Turk from Jersey who hooked me up with some incredible building knowledge like one night they just schooled me it was the last night and everybody's tired and we're hanging out and we're drinking beer and both M Turk and Omboyosi gave me this like tutorial like step up your Clapton game here's how you do it there's all these things and then the drill and then wires and all this stuff and that was incredibly helpful i'm gonna head to home depot as per m turks uh advice and get all the really good tools that i need because as it stands for all my building i've been using like whatever tools i had and i would occasionally like oh go buy a clippers or go buy a screwdriver i'm gonna go to home depot i'm gonna get rid of all my tools and i'm gonna buy all this new shit screwdrivers clippers pinchers the 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 tweezers that are you know have the the plastic on them for straightening out your claptons i'm gonna buy all this stuff i'm gonna step up my game and start building like crazy and just to see the way that m turk was knocking these out it was it was kind of unbelievable so shout out to m turk he built me some nice coils for my tugboat huge shout out to squid dude as well he built me a staple coil on this dot mod on here and it's just been uh it's just been fan freaking tastic. In fact, M Turk gave me a really good, a really good little tutorial on wicking. He's like, "Oh, this is how I wick," and it's fucking awesome. And I'm like, "That's kind of amazing." So, obviously, I'm gonna relay that information on YouTube as well in the future. He built me uh, not M Turk, but Squid Dude built me a staple coil. I believe it's that's ribbon in the middle, and then you you clapped in it so the cross section would kind of look like a staple staple coil. It's amazing. It holds so much juice, and the flavor is j just just crazy. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It is good. But yeah, like I said, had a great time at Vape Mania. Um, we, uh, Namber Juice, we did a, uh, a bigger booth this year. This is our first time we've ever done bigger than a 10 by 10. We did a 10 by 20. And so with the release of Grim Cult, which is the, you know, the metal themed juice line, I, I designed the booth to look like a rock club, like brick walls, posters, graffiti, a big banner that says Grim Cult. We had a full size drum set there. We had guitars there and literally every couple of hours someone would come up to me like oh can i play the guitar and then they'd start knocking out these metal riffs and i'm like that's so fucking cool there was one girl who was there i can't remember her name but i came back from lunch and she was just over there just like knocking out these metal riffs and i'm like i feel like i work at a guitar center like that's so cool and then i had this one fella he jumped on the drums and just went kind of bananas and it was fantastic And so yeah, that was just uh, that was just a lot of fun having the full time, full size drum set there and guitars. And I'm sure people were not stoked. I'm sure our neighbors just loved hearing drums all day long. But you know what? I don't really care because I had a lot. I had a lot of fun. I had a great time. And if our neighbors got mad, you know, obviously we would uh, we try to tone it down a little bit. But that was the whole point. We wanted to bring kind of uh, this whole rock show uh, vibe to our booth while people were tasting juice they could wail on the drums or play guitar huge shout out to adam story who lent us some very large cabinet speakers so the last day we could be even even much louder than we were before so shout out to adam story for those speakers it was it was fun it was a it was a fun meet it was a fun event um uh, I got to try Cheeksy's new juice line, which was, uh, where, why don't I have any of it sitting here? So yeah, Cheeksy Vapes released uh, the first two flavors of her Jewel Juice Co. there at, uh, at Vape Mania, and I think the flavors are obviously pretty delicious. There's one diamond that's a uh, 
custard flavor that I'm not I'm not huge on custards. It's an objectively good flavor. It's just I'm not huge on custards. But she does have this one, Peridot, 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 sure. That's a key lime meringue that obviously I vaped most of the whole bottle while I was there. See, this is a juice I get the feeling that uh, Ruby Roo would really like. It's kind of got that that citrusy flavor. Most of the time when I was there, I was vaping my own uh, Rainbow Sherbet in the Dark from the Grim Colt line, as well as the Jewel Juice Co. Peridot, and it was a great, it was a great fun uh, event. And you know, these events for me nowadays are less about like all the vendors that are there and uh, you know getting free shit. It's more about. I get to hang out with my friends, and I had a great time hanging out with my friends. I had a great time at the Grim Cult booth with the drum set and the guitars, and it was like a rock show that was going on uh, the whole time. And I do want to give a shout out to Tom, Tom the intern. So Tom shows up at the Grim Cult booth the first day wearing, I believe, a Cannibal Corpse t-shirt. And we're just talking about whatever, vaping and metal and this, that, and the other, and so he leaves and then I have to go get lunch and he comes back and he's talking to the to the Namber Juice crew that's there and they're hitting it off like old friends, right? And so I think it was Greer tosses him a Grim Cult t-shirt, puts him to work. The dude worked our booth the entire weekend. Like he was there like having people taste juices. So we, we nicknamed him Tom the Intern and he was our intern at Vape Mania and just a super cool stand-up guy. Obviously we gave him a bunch of juice. I gave him a mod and an atomizer and said, you know, thank you for your work. You actually really helped out a lot. So absolutely uh, shout out to Tom the Intern who helped work the Grim Cult and Amber Juice booth the whole time at Vape Mania 15, which is ridiculous. So Moving forward, we've already talked about a lot of stuff. I don't have any beer this week, so I guess we have to move on to shout-outs. It is shout-out time. These vlogs just seem to get longer and longer and longer and longer and longer every single time I do it. So my first shout-out that I have to do, do you see this? This is kind of a, this is kind of an adorable heartwarming story. <gasps> Pardon me. Oof. Sorry. Sorry, Sheik. That was a... That was a serious burp. Um, I met this guy, Andrew, at Vape Mania 15, and he was telling me that, you know, uh, that he watches my vlogs on a regular basis, that he watches my videos on a regular basis, and that his little son, Zach, has kind of become a fan. Not that Zach necessarily wants to vape, but Zach watches me because uh, his dad watches me. And his dad's a big fan, and so he, in turn, of course, is a big fan. It's like growing up, my dad loved The Doors and The Who, so I became a big fan of The Doors and The Who. And it's not necessarily that Zach wants to vape. So one day, uh, Zach gives his dad a mod. He says, hey, dad, I made you a mod. Out of connects, like, Ah, that is so freaking adorable. So he made another mech mod for for me, and Andrew delivered it to me. And so this shout out obviously goes to Andrew. Congratulations on on getting away from tobacco, and obviously thank you, yes, for the support. Definitely Zach. Uh, he made a connects mech mod, and the button on it is actually pretty nice. It's kind of a nicer button uh, than is on a, le a lot of mech mods, but uh, I guess we'll have to see how it vapes. Not bad. I mean, it hits really well. I like this uh, spinning atomizer design on there, but uh, yeah, obviously, definitely shout out to uh, shout out to Andrew and shout out to Zach for the Connects mod that I'm gonna keep. Uh, I'm gonna keep with my collection on my table over here. So moving forward, uh, I do have some more shout outs to do. This one comes to me from Vernon. Uh, he writes to me, this is from back in July. He writes to me and says, uh, hey Nick, I just wanted to say thanks for all your insight and knowledge on vaping. Uh, I have already shared my story with you, but I was wondering if you could send my very beautiful and supportive woman a shout out. She doesn't know much about vaping, but still tunes in, but still tunes into what I'm talking about and tries. <laughs> Her name is Shannon. I don't know any other person. I would have give a bigger, I would have give her big ups than you. Okay. Thanks again. And remember, let's keep on vaping. Absolutely. Vernon, Shannon, consider yourselves, uh, consider yourselves 
both shout it out. I have another one here. Ryan Vaporversary shout out. This is from August. Uh, hey, Nick, I wanted to write you because I want to give a shout out to a store called AwesomeVapor.com. I made the switch from e-cigs back in September 19th, 2009, and I remember I bought my very first e-cigarette kit from them. It was a little automatic pen style 801, 808D1 connection. I do remember those. Um, no, and they don't use that connection anymore with a blue light on the bottom. Since my vase of vape anniversary is coming up, going on six years, I wanted to give a shout out to the guys over at Awesome Vapor back in 2009. Finding affordable websites to buy vape gear from was pretty scarce since the vape market was still relatively new, and Awesome Vapor was the website I landed on and bought my first kit since I have to get into vaping. I watched uh, mostly all of your videos, and I kind of missed that old intro music. Just a thought. Maybe you could use it for a retro vaping section. <laughs> but once again, I just wanted to thank you for what you do. Your videos are awesome, and uh, thank you, Awesome Vapor, for serving me up my first kit. Absolutely. Uh, Ryan, first of all, congratulations. Six years. That's amazing. I'm coming up on seven years myself, and uh, it feels good. And yes, absolutely shout out to Awesome Vapor for uh, providing you with your first kit. You never forget. You never forget your first uh, vendor. One of my, I think my first vendor was Pure Smoker back in the day. Back in 2009, I remember I bought uh, clove juice from Pure Smoker. And uh, you know, you never forget your first. I don't know if Awesome Vapor is still around, and I know for sure that Pure Smoker is not around anymore. But yeah, you kind of, you kind of never forget your first. Uh, you know, kind of never forget your first vendor. Uh, I do have another shout out I wanted to do. I believe. Where did you go? Shout outs. Where did you go? All right. Well, I got one more shout out here. This comes to me. Uh, this comes to me via Logan. Uh, he says, hey, Nick, my name is Logan, and I'm a huge fan. I've gotten into vaping recently because I was watching your videos and it all and saw all the different thing you can do with a vape and how amazing it can be instead of just smoking a cancer stick. I love your videos. You are one of only two vapors that I watch on YouTube. I love the whole lifestyle and the community. I've been off cigarettes for six months now, and I've started to use Rebuildables a few weeks ago, and I love it. And that's one of the things that we kind of have to keep in mind is, you know, there's a lot of us, like we've been using these mech mods and variable wattage and temperature control and all this stuff and tanks and RDAs and building coils for a while. And then there's people who are just now, just today, just getting into it. Someone just bought their first RDA and have no idea what they're doing. So we need to actually, we need to help these people. And that's, I mean, that's that's kind of one of the, one of the really important uh, one of the really important things here, I have a bunch of friends who smoke and I've been trying to get them to switch over to vaping. My parents also smoke and I've tried to get them to switch as well. My father has recently been diagnosed with Bell's palsy, which is basically some nerves in his head were damaged and the physical symptoms resemble a stroke. The nerves were damaged on the left side of his face, which caused his muscles to droop like you would see in a stroke. The doctors said that smoking was the leading cause of the incident. This scared my whole family and my dad decided he would try to quit cigarettes. Right now, he has a small vape pen and was looking into getting something a little bit bigger. I think for a gift, I will get him a Vision Spinner too. I'm so proud of him for deciding to make the change and trying to be healthier. He's also starting to go to the gym and he runs a half, and he's going to run a half a marathon. Oh, he ran a half a marathon and came out 10th out of 48. Congratulations. I would love if you could share his story so that people who do smoke know that this stuff really happens, that vaping could possibly save your life. I would really appreciate it if you give him a shout out. His name is Gabriel. I have him starting your watching your video so he can learn a bit more about vaping. Thanks so much. Keep up the good work. Uh, sincerely, Logan. Absolutely. Logan, Gabriel, your whole family uh, who are smoking and are considering getting into vaping, consider yourself shouted out. There's literally no better time than right now to be getting into vaping. The technology that we have, the batteries that we have, the atomizers that we have, uh, and it sounds like uh, it sounds like Logan has his stuff together and he's gonna be able to show you all this. He's gonna show you how to charge your batteries and rebuild your atomizers and what juices to use. So it's it's good. Use Use Logan as a resource, but absolutely, Logan, Gabriel, consider yourselves uh, consider yourselves shouted out. Let me turn down these damn uh, let me turn down these damn Facebook notifications. Um, uh, let me get uh, let me get 
one last uh let me get one last shout out in there uh hi nick my name is geo and i'm an geo okay i'm probably pronouncing this wrong and i'm an avid viewer of your uh reviews and vlogs straight from the philippines i've been vaping for half a year now and just want to thank you for everything you've done you've taught me such a great help uh having stopped smoking cigarettes and starting vaping um out of all the beginners guides i saw yours was by far the best of all of them well thank you so much the three-part series helped me choose what i really needed to and taught me how to wrap my coils i'll attach the link in the video of my first setup it was the very first toot he ever had fortunately vaping has not been an issue here in the philippines and i hope that it won't be in the future speaking uh speaking of so we recently had the first we had a vape convention here the pvf the pinoy vapors forum had their fifth anniversary here um and it was a big event more and more vapors attend each year i'll attach a pic of the event itself i wasn't able to attend having said that i would be so happy if you could give a shout out to live vape union and all the vapors here in the philippines wish you all the best and as always keep on vaping absolutely every vapor this shout out goes to every vapor in the philippine philippines Consider yourselves uh, shouted out. Glad you had a great event there with the Pinoy Vapors Forum. Live Ape Union. Consider yourselves completely, completely shouted out. And thank you, Gio, for uh, for reaching out to me. So, shout outs. We did some shout outs. Uh, we talked about nickel. We talked about a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I still don't have any beer. And it's funny because now that I can't have beer, all I do is crave beer. But what we're going to do right now is move into some first impressions. <laughs> So I sit here, I pause the camera, I turn on my air conditioner to try to get all the vapor out of my office. I can't leave it running while the camera's on because it sounds like a jet engine right here. But then I just sit here and I vape and then I'm like, shit, I need to film some more and then I, there's still vapor in the room. So I don't know quite what's going on there. But first impressions, first impression time. So the first impression that I want to do, well, let's talk about something I hate first. Let's get off to a bad start. This has been somewhat of a cranky vlog. And we're just going to get into it. This new Smoke Tech tank, the TFV4, I hate it. I, I hate it. I, I physically hate it. First of all, look how big these coil heads are. This is gigantic coil head. I mean, that is a honking ass coil head. And so let me get to my emails here because I have an email from... Uh, I know her real name isn't uh, an English name, but sh this is what she goes by. Uh, where are you? Where are you? There she is, Joyce. So I was emailing with Joyce from Smoke Tech, and they sent me a TFV4 tank a while ago, like well over a month ago, and it was terrible. It leaked like you can't imagine. So I, can, I said this to Smoke Tech. I said, my TFV4, it just leaks like crazy. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. I've used plenty of sub-ohm tanks. I'm making sure the O-rings are in place. I'm seating it firmly into the base. I'm filling it up. It's just leaking like crazy. And they said, oh yeah, well that's a problem. So we're gonna, we reworked it and we're sending you a new version. They sent me another version, just as bad. Just as bad. Just leaked all over the place like crazy like crazy so finally they sent me this so i put this giant ass coil head into this base and it is in there snug i mean super snug as snug as i can possibly get it in and then you have this big glass portion which is here and this fits in here via an o-ring mm. then you have this top portion this little chimney and the little chimney screws in and then you have a completed tank and it's a big honking tank. It's got plenty of airflow. This is the black version and the top opens like this for filling. You see this little door thing here? Put your juice bottle in there, fill it all up, close this again, and you're good. You're good to vape. And so I gave this one last chance. I, I Joyce said, now Joyce, I don't want you lying to me, Joyce said this is the final newest version of the Smoke Tech TF V4 tank. I used it all last night, no problems. I was vaping it and vaping it and going, this is pretty good. It's not amazing, it's not any better you know, than any other tank, but it's good and it was working and I was just excited that it wasn't leaking. And so I had it on my Segele 150 watt and I came in here before bed, take some toots, shut down my computer, I set it down, I come in this morning, puddle, puddle of juice 
all over my Segeli. The tank is empty. It emptied itself onto everywhere, basically. And I see people loving these. Uh, people at Vape Mania were buying them. I've seen Amanda, and she loves them on her Instagram. And I'm like, I hate these tanks. I hate the coil heads. I've tried every coil head they've sent, and I've tried the rebuildable deck that they sent, and it still just leaks like you can't imagine. Additionally, smoke tech, dear smoke tech, slow down a bit. Let's just pump the brakes. So the, my last email from Joyce said, we are releasing these different cores, which I'm assuming they mean coil heads, to meet the needs of the different people. For your reference below, this is this is everything that Smoke Tech is releasing. The TFN2, the TFT2, the TFTI, and the TFS6. Those are coming soon. What they have out now are the TFT3, the TFQ4, the TFR1, the TFR2, the TFN2, the TFT2, the TFTI, and the TI, TFS6. There is such a thing as too much fucking variety. I get it that Smoke Tech wants to sell as much vape stuff as they can to as many people as they can, but releasing one tank with the possibility of having like 12 different coil heads, stop it. Stop it, Smoke Tech. If, if people are like, oh, I love the TFV4. Oh, really? What coil head are you using it? Oh, I'm using the TFQ4. Oh, well, I like the TFR2. You like the TFR2? I like the TFN2. You like the TFN2? I like the TFT2. The T2 is where it's at. No, dude. The TI. Are you sure it's the TI? What about the TFS6? Have you tried the S6 yet? It's obscene. Additionally, Smoke Tech doesn't quite grasp the concept of coils. So they have a dual and a triple coil tank, right? Coil head. They're, they're, they have a sextuple coil head, which they say is six coils. But it's not, it, technically it is six coils, but it's not six coils in the traditional sense that we think of six coils. It's actually a triple parallel build. So there's three, and it's this one. It's this one right here, and it's right here. So there's three coil heads. There's three coils on the inside, right? There's three coils on the inside, but they're wrapped parallel. You can see the coil, you can see the, the leads coming off of right there. So it's three parallel coils. And when you build a dual parallel coil in your RDA, you don't call it a quad coil, you call it a dual parallel coil. So this is a triple parallel coil head, not a sextuple coil head like they would lead you to believe. I feel like they don't quite know what's going on and they're like, six coils, it's a sextuple. So people are gonna buy this and be like, yeah, it's just a no big deal, it's a sextuple coil head, false. It is a triple parallel coil head. But now we're getting into semantics. This tank is horse shit. Horse shit. It bothers me. I hate it. I hate that it leaks. Additionally, the vape that I get from it isn't stellar. It isn't amazing. It's okay. The top filling method is kind of cool. A little door slides off just like that. You have a little door here and you fill your juice in there and then you shut it again. It leaks. Mine leaks all over the place. If you've had a different experience with the TFV4 or a similar experience with the TFV4, please let me know in the comments. As it stands, I wouldn't wish this upon somebody. There are dozens of other much better tanks out there. The original Star Tank, still one of the best tanks I've ever used, still holds up, still awesome. There's no need for this weird top filling thing. There's no need for a sextuple coil head. I was using the sextuple coil head and it performed exactly like a dual coil uh, coil head from let's say the star tank performed exactly the same people are going to buy the sextuple coil head expecting to win like the vape capital cloud comp and you're not you're just simply not going to get that much vapor because it's parallel it's not separate individual coils it's parallel it's parallel so damn it smoke tech stop making crummy tanks and now i have juice all over my hands so the other, uh, the first, of fir the real actual first impression that I want to talk about is this. So I picked this up at ECC. Uh, this is something I haven't talked about yet, and this is the gang mod. Do you see this thing? Kind of looks like brass knuckles. In fact, when it first came out, it was complete 
brass knuckles, but they've changed it. They've changed it so that, see there's little stars engraved there? They've changed it to be ergonomic still, but not have that uh, full brass knuckle look to it. And I got an email. I got an email from the gang mod guy. Where'd you go, gang mod guy? Where'd you go, gang mod guy? I can't even remember his name. Can't even remember his name. Joe, Joe writes to me. Joe wrote me an email that said the origin of the gang mod. I was asked today, what does gang mod mean? And I think it's time to share the origin of the idea with you. When I was 17 years old, I lost my grandmother to lung cancer. Her cigarette addiction had led her to a terrible death that my entire family witnessed. I was so angry and young, I wanted to do something about it, but I didn't know what to do. In the same year, I witnessed a gang attack on a young man, and almost they almost beat him to death. The experience was so profound, I wrote about it in my first book, and I discuss it frequently during my motivational programs. I donate to schools all over Los Angeles. That night, I realized that fear is what keeps us from overcoming our vices and life obstacles. I watched those gangbangers attack a single boy and was no longer afraid. I chose to do something about it. Big Tobacco is killing people every day, just as it did my grandmother. One day, Big Tobacco will recognize a gang of vapors rising from every corner of the earth. We will face Big Tobacco together. I believe that we can actually do something about it. A beautiful knuckle wrap vaporizer is not just a novelty. This is a message to Big Tobacco to the people this is a message to Big Tobacco and to the people who believe in us. Soon, that first gang mod design will no longer be offered on a global market. It was never my intention to mass produce it. I needed something loud to get everyone's attention. We're moving on to bigger and better initiatives and truly advocate a vaping lifestyle. Uh, Big Vapor is coming, Nick. If you're curious about the gang story, watch the following presentation I did three years ago to middle school in L.A. It's called I Am Not Afraid. So there you go. That's that's the reason why it looks the way it does. And without that story, you kind of look at the gang mod and you go, what? Why does it look like brass knuckles? Like, I don't need to look like a like a gang like a gang banger member guy i'm so white i don't need to look like a gang banger i don't need to look like a gang member i don't need to have a mod that looks like brass knuckles so i'm going to post a link in the description gangmod.com let me i apologize let me quick throw a battery in here so it has these different covers you see this see this cover right here there's a little tab you can pull off it's all magnetic you can swap this little cover out let's put a different one on there let's put uh Ooh, let's put this fancy one on there. Yeah, look at that. Look at that fanciness. We're going to put it on there. Single 18650. It does up to 60 watts. I'm going to pop this on here. Yeah, see that looks actually, uh, that looks kind of cool. What is cool about this device is the display. So hopefully we're going to be able to pick this up on camera. You see the display here? Yeah, it shows you basically everything you need to know. Your battery, the resistance, uh, the voltage you're getting, the wattage. It has the date. It has a clock if you need it. And so it's flashing at me no atomizer. And then when you adjust the wattage up, this little speedometer goes all the way up to 60 watts. And then when you hold it down, it goes all the way down to 7 watts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach one of my favorite tanks on here. This is the Goblin Mini RTA, which I'm just uh, I'm just a huge fan. I hope to have a review soon of it up. This does not appear to have a spring-loaded 510 connection, though. I'm going to test that theory right now. Spring-loaded? Are you? Are you? You are. Okay. You are. You're spring-loaded. Why won't you sit flush on there, little Goblin Mini? just doesn't straight up does not sit flush there's like a there's a big gap there a very large gap on there but i'm gonna fire this up oh it says it's a short it can't be a short why are you saying it's a short oh it's uh see yeah, it's 0 0.4 ohms so yeah, there it goes. Here we go. Now it's springing to life. It turns out it's not as short. It's 0 0.4 ohms. Let's set it to 49 and a half watts, and we're going to get 4 and a half volts. It's definitely giving me the power that I need. It is unquestionably comfortable to hold. I mean, having a little nook just like that for each of your fingers. Fire button's right here. You can hold it in your palm. You can see your display. It's really meant for right-handed people. If you're a lefty, you're going to have to look at it like this. 
and then have the display against your palm. The button's not clicky. It's a little bit squishy, sort of, sort of clicky, mostly squishy. It's super comfortable to hold. The battery life on a single, oh, whoops, I went to the settings. Uh, no, vaping mode. Oh, shoot. I'm in the menu that I'm not supposed to be in. Okay, 10 seconds. Okay, now we're back to, we're back to the main menu. Oh, it's auto firing. Holy shit. Oh, that's because I set it. I didn't realize you could do that. Let's get to the menu again. There's a setting here in the settings, vaping mode. I had it set to 10 seconds. So let's set it to four seconds, okay? So that means every time I press this button once, it's going to, uh, it's going to fire for four seconds without me holding it. That is disorienting. That is very, very weird. The chipset in here is made by Camry. That is very, very strange. So I had it to set to 10 seconds, and I thought the 10 seconds would be a cutoff, like you can't hold it longer than 10 seconds, but in reality, what the 10 seconds is, is, no, no, god damn it. Ugh. One, two, three, go to the menu, vaping mode, manual. What I thought the 10 seconds was, was a cutoff, like you couldn't press it longer than 10 seconds. What it actually is, is every time you press the button, it fires for 10 solid seconds. I set it to four seconds and used it, and I don't like it. I'm just gonna leave it on manual mode. But, well, I press the button to try to get to the menu, and it fired it again for another four seconds. So don't use that. Don't <laughs> don't use the uh, power mode. I've never seen a mod that's actually able to do that. God, we're 20 seconds into this. Uh, we're 20 minutes into this first impressions. And I've done one thing. So there you go. The gang mod. I'm not sure I'll actually do a review of the gang mod. Um, it's not getting a lot of use. Mostly it's out of stock on gangmod.com and the price is $299. 299 dollars for the gang mod. Don't get me wrong, the guy who makes it, very, very nice guy, motivational speaker. Uh, he makes kind of a cool mod. This one has a map of California on it, which I think is pretty cool. 299. That mod is $2.99. So moving forward, I did get a new mech mod in the mail that I've been using like crazy. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we're going to go simple. We're going to go with a reasonably priced mech mod. So this comes from Beyond Vape, Aria Built. I'm spilling juice everywhere. Good God, Nick. Get yourself together. So this is the Rune mod from uh, from beyondvape.com. It's got a sweet little logo on here. Kind of looks like a backwards lowercase uppercase n. It has nothing to adjust. It's a hybrid top cap and you adjust everything with this bottom cap. It's basically like a slightly telescoping device. So it has hybrid top cap on top. I've got my Kennedy on there. I put the battery in and then I just screw this in until it's snug and there's always going to be a little tiny little gap there brass button on the bottom and the spring is super soft and it's actually i much prefer a soft spring over a really really hard spring one of the reasons i like that cks uh mod from beyond vape as well was the spring on it was really really soft and i just that's my preference hits good hits nice and hard and the best thing about this mod it's only 75 bucks this is an authentic aria built device sold by beyond vape made by aria built 75 bucks for the rune and of course of course they have you know they hype it up on the website like a lot of other ones do but let's read through the features copper 18652 hybrid style top cap huge copper contact and battery venting custom epoxy coated conductive resistant magnets um concave and recessed brass firing button providing a smooth throw no battery adjustment necessary the firing assembly adjusts to your battery battery and addy pin Cooling and scratch resistant matte black Cerakote finish with a copper accent ring above the firing assembly. CNC engraved, individually serialized. This has been 
a fantastic mech mod. Um, I've been on a big mech mod kick lately. Uh, at Vape Mania, I was using my, my Petri, my Dot Mod a lot. I used that Continuous Current Manhattan V2 a lot, and now it's been this. I've been using this a lot, 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 and there's just something I love. It's so simple and so sleek and so... Why do I keep putting the rag away? I just need to keep the rag out 24-7 because I constantly am leaking juice everywhere. Rag needs to be attached to me. It's just so simple and clean, and I and I I especially like this because it's just black. It's just a black tube with a little accent stripe at the bottom, and it's so very sleek and cool and minimal, and I just think it looks so boss with that Kennedy on there. In fact, I've been firing this with my pinky. It's just been great. This is kind of a cool little mech mod. If it's... 75 bucks i mean shit man 75 bucks for an authentic mech mod i feel like i personally feel like for that mech mod it's a pretty good deal and obviously yeah i'm gonna have to spend a lot more time as with all my first impressions with uh, that device before i feel comfortable completely doing a full 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 review of it so vapeston let's move on to this uh move on to this mr vapeston i'm gonna put a link in the description this is the new magnus ni 0.15 to 0.25 ohm nickel 200 coil temp control right we just went on a, a rant about nickel so i have this 88 watts 0.15 ohm coil head i have it 88 watts i'm gonna turn down the temperature because that temperature is uh that temperature's a little high. I had it set to 550 degrees. I'm going to turn this down to like 460 degrees. 460 degrees. Let's see how it vapes. Still, still really, really nice. Um, this is a top filling tank. So you unscrew this very, very top part right here. Kind of like that Beyond Vape silo that I like so much. Um, I'm putting Rig Reserve in here. James over at Rig Mod. Has some pretty uh, pretty delicious juice, and that's what I'm filling up. And I like this tank because I can fill it super super easily with a uh, glass dripper bottle. But I'm just going to top this up. It's super quick. This screws back on, and it doesn't really control the air chamber. So when you unscrew this and screw this back on, it tends to to flood the coil head just slightly. That disappears after your first toot, though. It's good. This is a good tank. I was using it all last night when we were watching the Sons of Anarchy. Got it on the DNA 200. It's a pretty cool tank. The vape that I'm getting from it is nice. And yes, it's temperature control or temperature limiting. So I haven't got any dry hits, but even in the past, the Magnus, uh, you know, and the Star tank, which was a big whole ordeal, those coil heads all vaped really really well they all wicked the juice really really well to the coil head so I wasn't assuming that I would get a dry hit from that best of all doesn't leak have had zero leaking issues with this not out the top not out the bottom not out the airflow slots it's just been it's just been fantastic so yeah obviously I'm gonna have to spend a lot more time with this tank I think I'm really gonna enjoy this tank and these coil heads they seem to wick the juice really really well to keep that temperature sort of uh, limited sort of down but yeah Vapeston the Magnus NI oh we did the smoke tech TF4 the Aria Voon okay the gang mod okay last thing last first impression of the vlog before we get to any sort of retro vaping segment, this atomizer. So I got this atomizer from .comvapor.com, which is an interesting name, but you can head over there, .comvapor.com. Their whole color scheme is sort of hulky. It's green and purple, so that's why it has this huge purple chuff style cap on top. This atomizer is essentially the dark horse. It's like the newest slightly differentish version of the dark horse the deck is the same the posts are the same the airflow is essentially the same and if i could stop leaking juice everywhere when did i forget how to drip like when did that happen was that a thing did i miss the memo on that i forgot how to drip the deck is the dark horse deck the airflow is uh, not quite dark horse airflow, but it is a three part. So you screw this off and the chuff cap even goes in through the bottom. Like remember it did on the dark horse. Then you have this airflow adjustment ring. And then you have, I mean, look at that. There's four big, three big squares 
it's a lot like the Dark Horse, and I run into the same issues that I did with the Dark Horse. I don't like how it leaks out the airflow sometimes. This Overall, this atomizer seems to be really well built. The airflow stays in place, the screws down all nice, the O-rings on the bottom are just that perfect amount of snugness. Um, I do have a quick shout out to do for these coils. Uh, I wanna give a shout out to Matt. So Matt gave me a little baggie of coils and uh, he gave me these at Vape Mania. Matt gave me a little baggie of coils from Vape House and I threw the staggered fuse Claptons in here and they came out to 0.14 ohms, have them at 91 watts, little bit of a ramp up, but overall the vape is really nice and the flavor is really, really nice. I really do like the airflow on this and that's just a testament to people's vape tastes changing over time. Um, when I first did that Dark Horse review, you know what? I admit it, that wasn't my best review. I was using it on an iStick with a single coil. I wasn't stoked about big airflow back then. Now, I much prefer the big airflow. I like this. It's just the right amount of resistance, fully open. It's just the right amount of resistance to get that really good flavor and that really good performance. This atomizer is styled in a certain way, and I couldn't figure out why it was styled like that. It's got like this little lip down here at the bottom. But looking at their website, they're actually going to be releasing a mod that goes along with this, and it's styled very much in the same way. It looks to be a mechanical mod, and it kind of swoops in and swoops back out where the button is, and then it swoops up to where it's going to meet this atomizer. If the mod is as well built as this atomizer, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be really really good. I actually really like this atomizer and I'm surprised too. I'm really surprised, but I haven't built my own coils on it. I've only been using Matt's coils on here. Staggered fused Clapton, the performance has been top notch and the flavor the flavor is actually shockingly good. So yeah, obviously like all my first impressions, like always, I'm gonna need to spend a little bit more time with this atomizer before I feel before I feel super comfortable talking about it. But the comparisons it's gonna to draw to the Dark Horse when you see it up close is ridiculous. And I just also want to give a quick shout out to Amy Jeanette at uh, at Vape Mania. Amy Jeanette hooked me up with a bottle of uh, Dewey Boba. This juice is ridiculous. It is so good. It is. It's so good. Then I messaged Amy Jeanette and I was like, dude, thank you so much for this juice. It's blowing me away. I effing love it. I love it so much that after I sent that message to Amy Jeanette, went to Elevated Vape Vaping and bought 60 more mils of it just because I want to vape it because it's so good. And this is coming from someone that has probably 80 plus bottles of juice sitting in this cabinet back here. I tasted this Dewey Boba and I was like, more please. I will take two more bottles of that. So I went and bought two more bottles of that. And I rarely, rarely buy juice. Went and bought two more bottles of this Jazzy Boba just because I like it so much. It's nice. That is a very, very nice vape. So yeah, all my first impressions. I don't have a lot of first impressions and I may not have a lot of first impressions next week, but I do what I can. Obviously, yes, as always, I need to spend much more time with these before before I'm comfortable speaking to them on uh, on video. I definitely wanna spend more time with that atomizer. I wanna put some more builds in there. The post holes are gigantic. So I'm wondering how like, eh, maybe like a 22 gauge build would fit in there. Something that's not like a staggered fuse clapped, maybe something that's a little bit more simple. But what we wanna do right now after those first impressions is do some retro vaping. So what we're going to be retro vaping this week is something that's not actually really that old. Let me uh, let me do some Google Foo and find my original video for it. Yeah, so I originally uploaded my first review of this uh, December 8th, 2013. And when I got it, I actually really, really liked it. I called it a fingerprint magnet, which, yeah, oh, it's still super fingerprint magnet. Talking about the old eye taste. VTR, I was going through some of my uh, old vape stuff and I found this and I'm like, dang, I kinda wanna, 
I kind of want to break this out again. So what I'm going to do is grab an 18650 battery and I'm going to throw it in here. Now the iTaste VTR, man, it was a wonky little device, wasn't it? Had this little trap door on the bottom to stick your battery in, positive side up, shut it, does that inakin thing. And when I first got it, I thought that this was the fire button. And I was like, oh, cool. Finally, a detonator style uh, button on top. No, that's not the case. You adjust the wattage and lock it in with that. This is the fire button right here. So I'm going to turn it on. Uh, I've actually have an iClear 30 tank, and I've been this has been hanging around my vape layer, just rarely getting any use because for retro vaping, sometimes I'm going to need clearomizers, and that's just the fact of way it goes. So how did I use this? So okay, that checked the amps. It's a two. Let's actually check the ohms. I apologize. So let's turn this up to 4.2. No, let's turn it up to like 5 volts because this is a high, this is a high resistance little thingy here. 5 volts. Let's try 5 volts. So the tank, obviously, as you saw, fits in the bottom. And the bottom spins, which was a great idea because you can't lock your atomizer in there. There's that the one I just reviewed last week, the V mods. You can get your tank stuck in there. This had a little spindle kind of thing on the bottom so that you could easily, easily hold this, spin this, get your tanks out. Never had a tank get stuck on here. How did I vape this? I guess I vaped it like this. That's the way that I'm going to vape it right now. Oh yeah, that that 24 milligram throat hit, boy. What's even what's even more amazing to me, not that the VTR still exists and is still for sale, the fact that Fast Tech is selling it for $66. $66? $66 for this. That is insane. I don't know how much it cost when it first came out, but holy crap. I'm going to link in the description to the Inakin site where you can read about the VTR more if you want to. And I'm also going to link to the Fast Tech site so you can actually buy if you wanted to buy one. It came in this little black briefcase that I used for the longest time to hold all my rebuilding stuff. All my canthal, all my cotton screwdrivers, it all went in this little iTaste VTR box. $66 they're charging for this. And it does have a display and it does light up right there when you press the button and nowadays there's no tanks that are going to fit in this no tank i have fits in this i tried the phantom tank no that's just not going to fit in there no rdas are going to fit in this but it did come remember how last week in the v mods it came with that tube this comes with the tube for free and it's a tube that goes in here so you could use an atomizer or a different tank on top, something that necessarily didn't fit in here. And I remember a lot of people went crazy for the VTR, and rightfully so. It wasn't, it wasn't horrible. Oh, I missed that throat hit. It wasn't horrible, but people were cutting off this top ring so they could use their K-Funds on it. I remember people were modifying their VTRs. People were buying them and modifying them so they could use their little uh, their K-Fun tanks on there, which is ridiculous. I remember really, really enjoying this iTaste VTR. I used to take it with me to get, uh, to get tattooed because it was a tank, an 18650 battery, all in a box like this, and you just, it was rounded on one side. That's so cool. You just throw it in your pocket, pull it out, and vape anytime you want. I mean, not anytime you want. You adjusted the wattage and voltage with this little dialometer thing up here, little potentiometer. You could check your resistance on here, switch it back from voltage to wattage. The interface was really, really simple, and it did everything that, uh, everything that I wanted it to. I honestly, like, if you could get a sub ohm tank, like if Inakin does the VTR sub, I think that would be cool. I think they should do a single 18650 VTR sub tank version. I want to put a Kanger sub tank in here and I want to vape it in this box and have it have my tank like on display there on the side. Inakin, George, George from Inakin, if you're listening, please do the uh, I taste. VTR sub version. You could even call it the VTR I sub. Done. I just I just created your whole product for you, and I hope you release it. But yeah, there you go. Spending a little bit of um, all of about five minutes here with the I taste VTR. Here we go. One last toot. One last toot of that delicious twenty-four milligram. 
Uh, that is strong. One more toot. Okay. That is strong. That is strong. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this vlog up. This has been a long vlog. I haven't done any beer. We did a bunch of first impressions. We talked about Cali, and we actually did talk about Nickel Wire this time, but that's what I got. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. A lot of cool stuff coming up. I'm still headed up to Connecticut for the Vapor Trail event. I put a, I put a link in last week's vlog. I'll put another one in this week's vlog in case you want to grab some tickets for that. Come hang out. Come hang out with me and Ruby Roo. We're going to be drinking beer and eating steak and barbecuing and vaping our little faces off, and I'm really excited about it. Um, Got a lot of cool stuff coming up. Obviously, a lot of mods, a lot of RDAs, a lot of tanks, a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of stuff. Still, still coming up. But that's what I got for today. Obviously, thank you so much for watching, everybody. And as always, what am I gonna grab? Shit. DNA 200 mod down. I knocked everything off my desk. Let's vape this, and then I'm gonna check to see that everything's not broken. Let's keep on vaping. Okay, it's good. It's good. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine.